New York City is proud of its six upcoming Nissan Leaf cabs, but more than a hundred years ago an all-electric fleet of taxis served the city using technology that even today would still be considered cutting-edge. In the early 20th century, electric cars were actually mainstream. In 1900, there were more electric automobiles on New York City streets than cars powered by gasoline. True. There were only 4,192 cars sold in the United States that year, but 1,575 of them were electric. In 1899 90% of New York City's taxi cabs were electric vehicles. This fleet of electric cars was built by the Electric Carriage and Wagon Company of Philadelphia. The advantages were obvious, electrics were quiet, clean, and easy to use. Electric cars got their start in the early 1800s. Early efforts were more or less proof of concept, inventions with limited speed and range as well as using non-rechargeable batteries. However, in 1842, two inventors separately created the first practical electric cars with rechargeable batteries. The inventors were American, Thomas Davenport, and a Scotsman, Robert Davidson. Over time, improvements were made by various inventors, improving charge capacity of the cars, making better electric motors, and other things of this nature. What really eventually jump started the popularity of electric cars was in 1880 when Thomas Edison was awarded the patent for the carbon filament vacuum tube or in other words, a practical light bulb. As these light bulbs became increasingly popular over the next couple decades, so did the widespread distribution of electricity, providing the infrastructure needed for the electric car to be viable for the general public. Former Secretary of the Navy, William Whitney saw a business opportunity in using electric vehicles as taxis, and bought up a short-on-cash New York City electric cab company run by two engineers, Morris and Salem. With $200 million in assets, Whitney renamed the company the Electric Vehicle Company and dreamt of a taxi cab monopoly in every major American city. He hoped that New York would be his first success. Whitney thought he had found a solution to the key obstacle of battery-powered electric cars, limited range. Instead of stopping every few hours to charge an electric car's massive lead-acid batteries. At the end of every shift, the taxi driver would return to the central battery storage facility on Broadway and switch his spent battery for a rested, recharged one, much like a horse-drawn taxi driver would return to a central stable. The company could keep the cabs running around the clock since they only had to only to rest the batteries and not the automobiles themselves. At the time, the advantages of the electric car over the other popular types such as gas and steam cars were significant. The electric cars had no vibrations from the engine and were extremely quiet compared to its competitors. They also didn't emit smoke or any other pollutants in comparison with the gas-powered cars. They were also ready to go right when you sat in the car, unlike gasoline-powered cars that needed to be cranked by hand in order to start the internal combustion engine. The other large advantage with electric cars was not having to change gears, which was a hard thing to do in early cars but something that wasn't necessary in electric cars. The only real advantage that gas-powered cars had at this time were the long ranges they were capable of with larger tanks and the ability to fill up quickly when the tank was empty. Whitney built up the company's fleet from just 13 cabs to 200 and then ordered 1,600 more. The more vehicles Whitney built, the smaller his overstock of batteries became. In the quickly crowded spaces of the battery storage facility, maintenance grew slack and batteries began to fail. Within a few years, the electric vehicle company operated with a fleet of malfunctioning taxis. The company didn't have the money to update the cabs themselves and by the mid-1900s, were several years out of date. No longer able to justify the labor and costs of electric operations, the company liquidated its assets, and by 1907 the electric vehicle company was completely out of business. The electric vehicle company's experiment with battery exchanging taxis was seen as a failure not of a company, but of a system. 
With the ambitious promises of William Whitney fresh in the public mind, the electric vehicle company's bankruptcy deeply tarnished the reputation of electric cars. By 1915, due in part to his innovative assembly line construction, Henry Ford was able to offer his cars at a base price of around $500 apiece, which made it affordable for even average people, something that had never been the case before. In contrast, at that time the average price of an electric car had steadily risen to about $1,700. This was also around the same time crude oil was discovered in Texas and Oklahoma, which drastically reduced the cost of gasoline so that it was now affordable to average consumers. In addition to these factors, Charles Kettering has invented the electric starter, which eliminated the need to hand crank gas-powered engines. Roads began expanding, spurring the need for greater range that only gas engines could provide at the time. By 1935 the electric car was officially dead and wasn't revisited until around the 1960s and then still unsuccessfully.